The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi folks, Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technician's Hour, my pleasure to be here. Now don't forget, today's Thursday the 25th of July. What is Thursday the 25th of July? It is in fact the very day actually the very evening that you'll be able to join Steve Rhodes in his presentation, in his webinar presentation. So check that out on the front page of TFNN. Uh, sounds like a really uh, a great learning experience. And as Steve always does, he gives a presentation that is thorough, uh, focused, uh, to the point, and uh, extremely interesting and with great Great insights and knowledge. Uh, I really recommend going to the front page, check it out, and it should be terrific. Now, let's get to the nitty gritties of what we're looking at here. Uh, most importantly, I'm going to do a couple of things. As you know, for those of you who have been uh, either uh, subscribers of mine for, I've been here over 10 years for you know, any time during that period, or some have actually been in for, for uh, uh, almost all of that, uh, and I, I do thank you. It's uh, really a, just a terrific pleasure to be here every day and to be able to have my service, the opening call. What is the Chapman Wave about? It is really the most simplest of any technique you could ever find because why you only need four letters of the alphabet a b c d you also need to know how to type an uppercase a and a lowercase a yes like the piano you can go you know how the piano goes c d e f g a b c so c gets repeated to make those eight notes within those eight notes there are four there are two quadrants Four notes and four notes, and they made up of exactly the same intervals. Well, it took me quite a while to suddenly figure out, as I'm doing my uh, uh, developing what I had originally called the seven-way form, which took you to a peak D. So that's one wave up and one wave down. That makes that inverted V to start peak A. Then the moment you break A by one penny in the beginning, I never used to use a penny. I had all sorts of percentages and things. And I said, wow, that is dumb. Just make it simple. One penny, and you, it's like a ceiling. You just have to sneak above that ceiling, and you're into a new territory. So one penny above starts leg B. Okay, simple. What, in, in essence, am I doing? I am grading each successively higher peak. The object is that it gets stronger as it goes higher, and then you have to be careful. So you go peak A, the next leg starts a floating letter, B, and then the moment it makes a peak, it's called peak B. So this has got nothing to do with the lightning bolt that people talk about at TFNN, the A to B equals C to D, absolutely nothing to do with it, actually. It turns out later on that if you're able to develop a bunch of techniques together, you can apply the principle of that. But the actual notation is peak A, peak B, peak C, and at peak D, that's where it flashes a cautionary light. There are two things you can do. One is... All you need to do is make your stops real tight, or in fact, you can get out of your position, or part of your position, or you can actually go negative, because at D, that's where very often you get the most, um, the, the deepest and longest pullback. Now, if it goes higher, there are a whole bunch of things that I love to teach in my Master Trader series. I'm really building up an idea now on, on some kind of a Master Trader series that will be a little different to what I've normally done because I'm going to try to combine a bunch of things. Usually I have level one that goes for two days because there's so much to learn. And then level two is a follow-up of all that. It's the practical application that we start on the second day the afternoon of the second day, we go into the practical application in much greater detail. The second session is where we take those principles and we start to look at the variations. Um, now, with that preamble, I'm going to run the numbers. The Dow's down uh, 69 and 15,473. The S&P is down 370 at uh, 
1682. The comp index is up, uh, up, oops, oops, yep, it's up four, that's 3583. Remember the rotational aspect is absolutely, keep in mind, rotational aspect, rotational aspect, keep saying that, because that's what's been so important for, for five years, almost five years now. The gold contract is up six at 1326. Uh, that's the reason why I wanted to keep my gold stock, which is up uh, in, in my, in my uh, newsletter, because it's up Ah, uh, you know, the day's young. I, uh, but at this particular, right right now, let me talk about right now. <laughs> By the end of the day, it could be completely different. Right now, it's up about uh, 28%. Nice, I like that. Um, now, even more important is that the silver contract is up 14 cents at 20.16. I like it when they're kind of working together. That's important. Platinum up is four, up four at 14.61. Copper is down 15 cents at 3.1. Well, uh, 0.15 at 3.1. You got crude oil down again, down 54 cents at 104. Bonds are down a half a point. Now that is really important because there is now a cyclical change. It could be, in fact, more a secular change. We're going to be talking about talking about that over the coming uh, few days. And the dollar is down 25 cents, so that means the euro is probably up. Now, let's go through this. I'm showing here the, um, the e-minis, and on the right, if you're looking at Tiger TV, look at the right-hand chart. Let me just go to it myself so that I know we're all on the same page. Yep. The right-hand chart is a 120-minute chart. It took you from a peak A to a B to a C to where... D at 1695.75. The MACD, look at this. Let me just draw this in for you. Right there and right there. Look at the difference. In fact, that is going to show you something really interesting. Look. That's divergence that you must never ignore. You see that when it went to peak D at 1695. The price was higher than the 1694.25, which it has to be for leg D and then peak D. But look at this. Look at the MACD. The MACD. The MACD is more powerful than the stochastic in the sense that it's got the larger trend. And the trend there said, "Oh, oh, be careful. We are failing." Right. And look at the stochastic. It pops up over an 80 percent and then fails immediately. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Bad. So now what's happened is the black line, the nine period moving average, which was so beautiful in terms of support, is now resistance. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Now we're going to look at something else. I wanted to do this actually yesterday. I'm just, uh, we had so many calls that I, I just didn't get to it. I'll have to take a course today, but there's a chunk I want to do right this very moment in this seg segment. Look, we had said Apple. Needed a leg D up in the Chapman Wave methodology. What did it get? It got the spike up to leg D yesterday to 444.59, uh, and now it is down 436.73. We're going to watch to see if it makes a peak D uh, of significance or whether it's just going to do a partial fill in of the gap. Why? Because the MACD is still very strong. The stochastic is weak at 64%, and that says... When that fast-moving average starts to turn down, Apple is going to go down. In the meantime, it's a high-level consolidation. If it closes under 435.26 yesterday's low, I'm going to say if it closes under 434, that's going to be negative, and it will target lower prices. Now, the arch formation, that H, remember I drew it in right there. This is the weekly chart. There's that H formation in the Chapman methodology. I've discussed it over and over. There's that technique I call the lower H if it breaks under the left side low bar and closes under that, that's not good. So far it's held, so that's going to be very important. The monthly chart still says, looking out, we're talking about November, that has a target of 353. We'll see if that happens. Okay. Look at this. SDS. What does it do? This is the 200% short, the S&P. It goes from a low of 37.45 on the 22nd of May, where does it go to? It goes to peak D at 4332 and then collapses. Now it's trying to have a bounce. The DXD, that's the 200% uh, short, the Dow, that goes where? From the 3288 low of the 22nd of May, it goes to the high of the uh, 24th of June at 3710, peak D plunges back below that, closes many times below 32.88. It says, okay, watch this closely, because until it smashes, it really has to smash through 32.94. That was the high of the 16th of July, um, which would also be about the 32.88 low of 55 
of May the 22nd, that's going to be what you want to watch for. The weekly chart says, hey, there's a divergence here that's worth looking at. Let's look at the QID. The QID is 200% short. The uh, NASDAQ Qs, those QQQ Trust Series, 22nd of June, it goes to uh, 2171 low, spikes to where? Peak D on June the 24th. So what are we looking at? Plunges down, and now it's holding quite well, but uh, you already need to see that gap filled, and you want to see it break into the 2255 or higher in the next week or so, and then you're going to get a more sustained move. Let's look at the, um, just for the moment, the VIX index. VIX index made a, an unusual peak G at 2191. It's come down in the Eiffel Tower formation below the 1226 low. It went to 1207. It is up only 20 cents right now, up 1.52%, but it's at 1338. And where is that? That's right on the line. 1341.42 is the nine period exponential moving average. If it closes above that by tomorrow, the weekly chart is great. 1446 is the level to watch on the uh, VIX index. But so far, it's just saying, hey, this is, hey, the, they just saw on, on, on um, NBC, uh, it was printed up something about the worst decline in July. Um, <laughs> we're down, what, 72 points and down only four in the S&P. But it's something to take into, um, uh, I think, Hog, Harley Davidson. Man, it's impressive that Harley Davidson it was almost at new highs this morning, 59, 54, 59.84. 59.84 was the high in May of this year. Um, did I write that incorrectly? Oh, uh, yeah, 59.84. Uh, that should be 84. That made a peak effort, plunges down. And what does it do in a left side, right side price time match? Didn't I just draw that in? A left side, right side price time match. It spikes up today on good earnings. This is very important that Harley Davis is, is doing that in a time period shorter, but didn't break to a new recovery high. It went to 59.52 in leg what? Leg D. Isn't that interesting? Let's go to the gold, GLD. The GLD, peak D. But the MACD is very strong. The stochastics at 91.15. That's why I didn't want to even try to exit any positions um, that I would that I would have in, if, if I was in the gold, uh, even more, then that's exactly what I'm looking at. Look, DXY, peak D in the Chapman wave, goes from 80.50, the low of the 13th of June, to where? 84.75, A, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D at 84.75, Plunges down, and the test of 81.86, that 200 period exponential moving average, is going to be really, really important. Let's look at um, the DIA, the diamonds, made a peak D at 155.74. It's pulled back. This is one of the deepest pullbacks it's had so far uh, since the low of 145.17. And um, UA, is, uh, the earnings came out today. What did they do? They spiked to what? Leg D. Boy, that's one lesson. Easy as the alphabet A to B to C to D. I'll be back with Mike from Long Island straight off this message. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. With the launch of Tiger TV. 
TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator and is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 83, S&P's down 5.31. Uh, I'm going to explain a couple of things in a moment, but I had two questions, and we've got callers online, but I'm going to do this because I just, I know I'm going to forget. <laughs> Yesterday I had all those things written down. I, what, uh, I had an early um, email here from Travis. He wanted to know about Zynga, Z-N-G-A. Um, uh, he's in at about 3.35, and he wanted to know, with earnings coming out, what do I think? I, I believe that, it, that in this area, because of what Facebook has done, that there's now an opportunity for anything that's kind of related, that has already been through tough times, but has a chance at least to... to if there's even a little bit of good news, then it should go to leg D above 3.64. That's all I can tell you. I have. How can anyone really tell what's going to happen, how the price will respond? Because it's what, not just what they do, it's what they say. So, and you don't know that. So I, chart-wise, I'd say great entry point. Whoops. Uh, both the daily and the weekly and the monthly, forget it, it's just the most horrible chart. But the daily and the weekly <clears throat> are suggesting that there will be a pop-up and there could be a pop-up above the 364 high, but I, I don't know how much you got, what your position is, so that part of it is a little bit of a mystery. All I can say is that everything about it says it has to be real bad news to break under 319, uh, 320, 322 was the low uh, just a couple of days ago. 
more likely it's going to either go sideways or it's going to have a nice pop to give leg D about uh, 364. I'm going to suggest that if it holds all the way through to tomorrow morning, regardless of where the market closes, I'm going to suggest that you um, take a little bit off the moment it breaks in above that peak C, and it's just nice money management to be able to take something off <clears throat> in this environment. And I'm, I'll talk about the environment. <coughs> Excuse me, as we move along through the show, because um, I have, based on the Chaffway methodology, we had no choice but to uh, saw a short position on the Dow uh, the other day at that peak D, peak E. That's just the, the name of the game. Um, everything looks fantastic. That's got nothing to do with it. It is, a, it is the protocol that we follow. I'm going to go to our first caller. We've got Mike in Long Island. Hi, hey, Mike. How are you? Uh, Mike, you're there. Yes. Hello? Yes, hi. How are you doing? Good. I like the People's Court uh, theme music you had on today. Oh, isn't that interesting? My producer and I were just discussing that. He was saying the People's Court theme was originally arranged and conducted by Alan Tew Orchestra. And he know, knew Alan Tew for having composed and produced easy listening formats for music. So that was really a great surprise to him. I, I recognized uh, the tune. I didn't know the whole thing about the People's Court. So that's something new to me. Thank you very much. Now, you'd like to look at... I'd like you to judge uh, LVS today and um, determine whether there's enough to go short right now. Okay. Now, this is a very interesting question. Why? Because LVS, very often you'll find that the, um, I know they've got a term for it. I always chuckle about that. They call them, um, they're in the casino area, but I wanna, one of the, services had the title as oh it was a euphemism and it was really clever i can't remember what it was it doesn't matter um now i've got that as an f and that is i'm going to call it a g slash c okay i just quickly did my notation in the different time frames of course everybody knows that i've done this before we once had a fantastic trade on lvs um, but I had to just redo. That isn't an R there, folks. With my wonderful typing, that should be a G. I'll change it. Okay, so here we are. The daily is done. What is it done? In the Chapman Wave methodology, what do you look for? The lowest, most identifiable low bar. That is the low bar of the 24th of June with the general market. That was the week that it, most of the uh, stocks... Uh, Bottom for this bounce at 47.95, and what does it do? It goes to peak A at on the 1st of January of July at 54.45, peak B at 55.23 on the 15th of July, uh, July the 18th, uh, 55 round number, but it has a 56.43 high. It goes to what? Slightly high. It goes to 56.55 on 23rd of July. Now this is what I'm going to suggest. You don't have a position right now, right? Right. Okay. Based on the weekly chart and based on the daily chart, I'm going to say, yes, I would start a short position. I would prefer to have seen this, the MACD cross already negative. Uh, it's still a little bit positive. The, the histogram is still a little bit positive with little green lines there. But everything about it says it should be going down. So uh, I'll give you my synopsis as soon as we get back. I want to do just a little bit more work on the 120 minutes in case it's at a low. Okay, great. I'll be back with, uh, oh, we've got a bunch of people. I'll be back straight after this message, these messages with Mike, Brian, and Muhammad, and Sue straight after these messages. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals, and then specific trade recommendations including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. We are back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions out. Dallas down 80. It's down 484. Well, I, for a while now, I've been really impressed. Uh, impressed in the historical sense at how many times we've seen quite a large divergence between either the S&P and the Dow or the Dow and the S&P where one has been far stronger or weaker than the other and right now the Dow is way weaker than the S&P and we're going to go right back to Mike in New York so LVS Las Vegas Sands um, I'm going to make the suggestion right now based on the daily Apple. and the weekly yes I get a just a leg F in the monthly. I don't get that G. Uh, let me just check here. I did that real quickly. You're obviously looking at Tiger A, B, C, D, E. So I don't know if you missed it or not. Um, I, 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 hmm. Did you get the high of uh, 2382 on the, in April of 2010 with the lower peak in, in May for peak C? And then peak D is right there on the six, in, in June 2010, 2509. Next month was a, low of, a high of 2474. So you might have a little different data, but that's the way I'm looking at it. But it's not that. It's the two patterns here. One is this rising cup formation that... Um, I'm looking at, and it says that when you get that uh, higher highs and higher lows, but it takes its time because it's, it's more, more a cup formation, makes a normal new high, then pulls back, and then it goes to a lower low, and then 
back to a higher high, that's like an outside bar. That's like, a, like a, an engulfing candle to me. So I look at it and I say, oh, okay, where is the stochastic? It's at 84% in the monthly. The MACD is just flattening out and saying there's limited upside. It also says in the monthly chart that on a percentage basis, there might be a limited downside, but that doesn't say that a short position going back to test the Roman candle wick, it's a positive one actually, uh, of June of uh, the week of June the 28th can't happen. So here's my, my suggestion. There is still some strength in the, um, in the MACD. So I'm going to say just a small position at 53.70 where it is on a short side with the intention that it just above the 9 EMA at 54, right on it, let's just say 54.80. It's at 54.86 is the 9 EMA. You would add another small position, and the whole thing has a stop of 55.36. What you're really looking at is that by tomorrow, today or tomorrow, that it's at 53.74, that it, it closes closer to the low of 52.90. If it does that, 51.90 is the 200 period moving average. If it even gets there, the weekly chart is saying, wow, that kind of weakness should get it all the way into at least the um, open of of the week of June the 28th, that's 50.47. So I would go step by step and treat it as if the monthly is saying, yes, it could pull back, but it's not a major turn down yet. The weekly is saying, uh-oh, this rally didn't have any legs to the upside, didn't have any strength, it should be pulling back. So I hope that helps you, but I, my bias here is to look at LVS as uh, a short, not a long. Hope yep. that helps you. Yeah, good. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you very much. Let's go to Brian and Jackson. Hi, Brian. How are you? Hey, Basil. How are you? Very well. Thank you. I always value your opinion very much. And I have a, I was looking at going short on IBM, and uh, I was looking at going short around, <clears throat> excuse me, around 198, but I don't, I'm not sure if it's going to go back up that way. I was going to get your opinion on that. Well, first of all, thank you very much. I do appreciate your comments, and uh, I, thank you. So, this is IBM's chart, folks. You remember the pattern? I was just to, patterns repeat. It doesn't matter where or who, and so often they will repeat, repeat in completely diverse areas. In this particular case, the monthly chart has that that cup formation with rising highs, rising lows. And then it stalls, and that stall says it is just stuck in a trading range, and the nine-period exponential moving average in the, in the monthly chart is, in fact, going to become a very serious resistance level. It also has a technique that I call a flat-based restart. I've kept that in place, and that says that although you can keep coming down, there could be one more spike to the upside to give you that requisite leg D. When it comes is not yet the issue, but it should come before... It breaks, and the level I'd be looking at would be the breaks 177.35. That's 22 points uh, below this. Okay, now the weekly chart says made a peak E, and that peak E is the same cup formation, two cups, double cup, and it went to 215.90. It's pulled back sharply to 187.68, rallies up to 211.98 in May of this year, comes all the way back to 188. So... If you're looking at it, I always chuckle. It reminds me of when I was a, a kid. My brother and I used to be at the table with my parents, and I would take a knife and I put the blade on the on the table, the tablecloth itself, and then press the handle, and it would go, ding, and oscillate. It would drive them nuts. Of course, th that's exactly what was, <laughs> was my intention, I suppose. But um, that oscillation then slows down, and it slows down, and that's what we're looking at here. So the weekly is saying upside. Might might have been great if it could have held above the nine period moving average at 196, 197, but it couldn't. It's trying for it, but so far there isn't all that much strength. So now, because you had spoken to me in terms of, I, I, from your voice, what you I, it seemed to me that what you were really looking for is that you were looking for momentum in price and time. You didn't want just a quick short to get a you know a point or two. You really were looking at. Am I correct in a position play? Uh, I was going to try to go short somewhere around 198 and maybe write it down to around 190 or between 198. Okay, so that's nine. So that's about a five to six percent. Okay, if we talk, we're talking about the same 
kind of price points in, in, in percentage terms. But I, yesterday it couldn't really get much higher than 197.30. So this is what I – do you ever do options? Um, I have done them in the past. Um, okay, I, so then let's do this. I'm going to give you a suggestion, and I believe you actually have a little bit of time here with IBM. Today's Thursday, then you've got Friday and Monday. Listen to the options show at, at, at 12 o'clock on Tuesday. I'm not sure who will be there. This is a think or swim, uh, whoever they have presenting. They're all outstanding. And I'm going to suggest that you ask them the question of an options play that looks out further with a target of about 190 190. Let's just say 190. Meanwhile, we're going to look at something else, and what I'm going to su suggest to you is that the 120-minute chart, you see, right now, IBM is only down 60 cents. Um, it's, it's down only 30.31, and the general market is down, down, down 50.50, and the S&P is down 0.31. I would have expected if IBM was going to really be weak, it would be testing the nine-period moving average. So I'm going to suggest that you have a little patience in, in terms of shorting. I would, I would jump on the short side in a small position if IBM broke 195.30 by the end of the day. But at this particular point, I'd be – the way it's trading, it's got this pattern. My eye says it's a rectangle formation that's forming. I'm just going to draw it in here, and then I'm going to expand it. And it says until it really breaks – the low of 193.24, the low of the 19th, it's going to just go sideways. And, and really, that's why premium, options premium probably is the best way to trade IBM right now because it will shrink on the, on the call side and it will shrink on the, on, the, on the put side. That's the reason why I'm thinking that it's not the kind of – I just play straight options. In fact, in my opening call, we do have an option trade right now, which is quite doing very nicely. Um, uh, well, I shouldn't say too very nice. It's an option. You never really know until you sell it. But it's based on something else, on a stock that I think is going to go lower, which is weakening as we speak. But that's a little different. It's just a naked call or a naked put. In this case, it's a naked put. It's just straightforward. So I don't want to get into the complexity of, 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 of the trade. I think the, a professional in the future in the options area would be great. Or um, the way I would do this, based on the 120-minute chart, is if you want to nibble at a small position in IBM, then the idea is on a short side, I would put a stop 197.30. It really is not a big deal for a $196 stock to have a 1% uh, um, um, stop, buy stop in this case. At 197.31, I'm out. That's the easiest way to do it, and I would add to it if it starts to accelerate down. That's the only way I would play this. If you had to ask me right now what would I do, I'd say hey, I think they're better trades. I would step aside on this one. You know, at this kind of price, you've got a Panera actually at 165. Panera is a very weak stock. I was just, I was, it was my fault the, uh, two days ago, three days ago. It was on my list. I mentioned it. I did everything. And then I completely forgot that the earnings is the one time I would have actually traded it for earnings because it was just showing tremendous weakness. So at that price, is there are other stocks that are much – you see, if you look at the two charts, Panaria looks like it's going down. It's going down for a while. IBM is just stuck in this little range. So if you had asked me what would I do, I'd say I would leave it for now. But I'd love you to consider calling in. And talking about, oh, uh, maybe Andy Hector does it. You know, I know he does options quite a bit. So maybe Andy this afternoon will give you a, some kind of a perspective on how you could trade that with it not going up much and not going down much. Hope that helps basically, you. Yeah, basically you're saying it's too much uncertainty to put it well, It's not that there's uncertainty. The stock looks like it's stuck in a small trading range. That's really what I'm saying. And until it breaks that range, I would rather trade it as a stock that sees the premium coming out of it on the on the call side and the put side. I got you, man. I appreciate it very much. Thank, Thank you me. very much, Brian. Thanks for calling. Always appreciate it. Let's go to Mohammed in Glendale, California. Hi, Mohammed. How are you? Hi, Basil. Thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. Uh, I was wondering if I could get your opinion on uh, Pulte Homes. Uh, seems like um, there's a breakdown in home builders. Yes. I was wondering... Um, you see more downside and how much, maybe down to 
will it hold around 1620 or would it go further down to maybe 15 so, uh, well, I, there are a couple of levels to look at, but first I just want to explain something to the listeners. Um, folks, if you, if you have your Pulte chart up but you aren't looking at Tiger TV, look at the low in Pulte, PHM, Pulte Home Group, uh, Pulte Group, they changed their name, I think, Inc. Uh, 1746 was the low on the 18th of April. What does it do? It goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, doji candle on the 15th of May, and it plunges down to retest the low of, 17.46 and said it goes to 17.75 just above makes the h pattern pops up make it makes a bigger h pattern and then collapses today and goes right under it <clears throat> this bar is the most important bar we've seen in Pulte home since the doji candle high of the 15th of may why this is the bar that has to immediately by tomorrow at the absolute latest it has to try to get back above 17.46, the low of the 18th of April. If it doesn't do that, immediately I have to move to where? To the weekly chart. And what does that show? Why? It shows there were three buy modes in the chap wave from October the 11th, the uh, week of October the 7th. Um, yeah, October the 7th of 2011 at, at $3.29. $3 it goes all the way to PD. Then it makes a quick E pulls back at the 200 period moving average, that yellow line, isn't that beautiful, the way it struggles at that line, then it does a brand new peak, A, B, C, D, to the top in 26th of October, the week of the 26th of 2012, 18.30, pulls back to the 9 period moving average, goes to peak A, B, C, big cup formation, spikes up to another D at 24.47 on the 17th of May, and now it's plunging. What does it say? It says there's a real good chance that Pulte is going to the the low of 14.55, the week of the 16th of November of last year, and that says, wow, 14.55, between 14.55 and 13.66, that's going to be absolutely key. Do you have a position in this? No, I'm just looking, uh, looking at it, whether, you know, at what uh, position, whether to enter or short. Um, it seems like it's weakening, so it's more like a short, I believe it. Oh, absolutely. I would not put this in as a buy until it starts to do a bunch of testing and retesting between the 15-something and the 1368 200-period uh, moving average. I, it might not go to the 200-period moving average, but it's going to get close. And the candle of the 16th, the week of the 16th of November at 1455, when, once it gets into midway of that candle wick, if it goes to 15.23, there's a real good chance it's going to retest the low of uh, 1455. I could, in fact, do a left side, right side price time match. Yeah, no, I think that within the next uh, two to three weeks, Pulte should be trading towards the uh, uh, the 15 to 14 area with that 1366B. Absolutely imperative. That's so important to hold. If you look at the monthly chart, what have we got? Low bar of $3.29, October, October 2000, goes to peak A, B, C, goes to a D, at D, you've got to expect some kind of pullback, deepest pullback by far that Pulte has had altogether, and it's gone from the high of $24.47 down to today's low of uh, $16.53. No, it's more a short than a long. I'd only start looking at it when the whole group starts to build a bit of a base, and that should take a little bit longer. Hope that helps you, Mohammed. Yes, it did. Thank you so much, Dazzle. Thank you very much. Folks, we'll be back with soon Bethesda, Maryland, straight after these messages. And I also wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm looking at in terms of the VIX and other things. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for all these messages. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN.
Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Nowhere, spelled N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. At one point, we've all been there. Whether it be our health, career, or our finances, some might be there right now. So where are you when it comes to your trading and investing? Better yet, where would you like to be? The good news, I can take you from nowhere to now here right now. Same letters, N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, just a totally different emphasis and focus. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and on July 25th at 6.30 p.m., I'm going to share with you a trading strategy that I began on May 10th when the S&P was at 1627 and closed at the same price eight weeks later. That's right, the S&P went nowhere versus a trading strategy that produced a 100% hypothetical return in that same period of time, and it's now here for you. Subscribers to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability, have free access to this exciting live workshop. The trend is your friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Decisions shape your destiny, and your trading destiny is now here for you. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. We're back, and we're going to go to see in one second, but I just needed to do this because it was on my list. I nearly forgot about it. Uh, maybe I did. No, I didn't. Dunkin' Donuts, one of my favorites. It's gone to a peak E at 45 round number high. Peak E in the daily. Peak E in the weekly. Doja Candle, pulling back. Great earnings. Spikes up this morning to a high of uh, 40. It opens at 43, 42. Goes to 43.50. Plunges. It's right down at 40.95. Now, this is going to be a very interesting period because if there is great news coming out, really good, there's very little bad news, and the market goes down. That's the stealth bear. I've, we've got to be careful about that. So far, the technicals and the daily charts of the S&P and the, the Dow uh, are actually holding really well so far, but the technique of using the PD or E is imperative if i get a chance we'll even look at the new york stock exchange which needs just a little bit more to make leg d up in the monthly charts the only one missing it let's go to sue hi sue how are you oh, hi thank you thank you so much for taking my call um, my pleasure yeah can you help me just get the opinion that you know it was the earnings uh, today uh, after hour clf c as charlie l as lolly and f as a frank so and another cliff. one is b a s BAS. So Cliffs yeah, Resource, uh, Natural Resources, Inc. You, do you have a position in it? Yeah, I have it for a long time, and it, it, it's a losing money, but it's a, uh, the, the earning is coming up to uh, up the hour today. Yeah, That's okay. Let me just do this. First of all, Cliffs Resources, Natural Resources, the monthly chart, I don't have to tell you, the monthly is horrible. The weekly chart is just a little bit less than horrible, but the daily chart is starting to show some strength. But 
This is really important. You have a position. I'm going to do two things real quickly. Number one is, because it's coming off a bottom, there is no guarantee that it needs to make leg D. Leg D would be above $19.15. If, if there is any hint of good news and it's able to spike to, to this afternoon going into tomorrow at 9.30 to 9.45 tomorrow. I don't care what happens overnight. It's tomorrow. If it goes above 19.15, call me tomorrow during the show. Are you able to call you tomorrow? Yes, I can call you tomorrow. I appreciate that. But should I just hold it after hours? <sighs> if, it's going, if it's going higher after hours... Then what I'm going to suggest, because you've got a losing position, and even if it spikes, it's still going against you, make a stop somewhere. If Let's just say it pops up and it goes to $19.22. That's yeah. a, dollar, a dollar and a quarter higher. What yeah. I'm going to suggest to you is make a stop that says, I've got to stop at $18.12, something like what it is right now, okay? okay, on some part of your position. And then we'll talk about tomorrow. If it gaps down, it's going to, that's, oh, man, if it gaps down, that's going to be really, it's at the point where it should start showing some good news. So you've been in this long but don't let it go back to the 15s. That'll be terrible. You've got to have a stop on your position, some part of your position, around about $17.70 regardless. You've got okay, to. You don't want to go through that. And, as yeah, for okay. and the same thing with BAS. Yes. And BAS is Basic Energy Services, Inc. It's a $13. It's a much nicer chart, BAS, because yes. it's already come off the bottom. So if this one has bad news and goes under through $13.16, you've got to put some kind of a stop in. But I'd have yes. a little bit, maybe a little bit more of a leeway there. If it actually spikes higher and it goes to... It's a 13.6. If it goes to 13.90 or 14.10... Make your stop somewhere around on half your position, at least around about $13.60. Let's look at it again tomorrow, okay? I hope okay, it works out for you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I hope for it works time. out. Thanks for okay. calling, Sue. Call okay. me again. Okay. Folks, thank you for Larry Pierce Event. I'll be back with Tom O'Brien this afternoon at 520. The Dow's down 66. And uh, thank goodness most of our positions on the long and the short side are working out very nicely. I will be back with Tom later this afternoon. Thanks for being here. Don't forget my service is the opening call. Check it out. Two weeks free on the front page of TFNN. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.